All right. So it sounds like some of, or it looks like some of you can see and not hear, um, and some of you can hear. So we're going to run a quick test. Christian, can you say a quick hello on your end? Sure. Um, hello. Good morning. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Perfect. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to get started in just another moment. Uh, we want to make sure we're able to get as many of you in real time as possible uh, for this. Uh, we will be uh, taking questions, through, or excuse me, uh, collecting questions throughout the webinar, and we will do our best to answer as many uh, in real time uh, or during this session as we can. I will be posting a link in the chat box for all of you. Uh, it's for the AppSheet Community Board and it will be a post specifically for this particular topic. You'll be able to ask any follow-up questions there you might have. We'll post answers to any outstanding questions that we may have, as well as a recording of this particular video. All right, perfect. All right, it sounds like we are all set uh, for from a technology standpoint, excellent. All right, so uh, we wanted to do a quick introduction, an introduction and welcome everyone uh, to today's session. Uh, my name is Jennifer. I'm a product marketing manager. I've been working closely with Christian, uh, who many of you may already know. Uh, Christian, if you wanna say a quick hello. Sure, uh, hello everyone. Um, yeah, I'll be uh, kind of guiding the overall presentation, but we'll be sharing it from, uh, between me and then the rest of the AppSheet team. Excellent. And then you'll also hear from uh, Derek uh, quite a bit as well. Derek, if you want to say a quick hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Derek. I'm a solutions consultant uh, with AppSheet and uh, looking forward to the webinar. Excellent. Uh, we have Praveen in the room uh, today as well. Praveen, if you'd like to say a quick hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, Chris Bailey is here. Uh, I work very closely with Chris. He's also a product marketer. Hi. And then uh, Arthur is not with us today, but we do have the wonderful Mary uh, with us as well. Mary, if you just want to say a quick hello. Well, with that, that introduction, yes. Hello, everyone. Excellent. Uh, so we want to take just a moment and recognize that we may not be able to answer everyone's questions today, but we will do our best. Uh, we know that this is a, a difficult hurdle uh, for many, but we really want you to know that you have support here should you need. Uh, we are simply one of the possible solutions for you to choose for your business platform development tools. Uh, so please feel free to reach out to us at any time to answer questions or ask questions. Uh, but we'll, for now, we'll get into the webinar. And Christian, I will uh, pass the torch to you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. So, and, and on that note, basically, I'm coming into it as a way to probably provide as much information on the AppMaker perspective uh, compared to AppSheet. So, I'm essentially trying to allow our AppMaker users to be able to start to connect the dots so that they can make the best informed decisions. So, so in general, this is what we put together. We actually worked on this a couple of days ago. Uh, we worked out the overall agenda. Um, we're going to try to, you know, uh, introduce the webinar by explaining our overall goals, handle a few early kind of questions that have been appearing in the forums, and then we'll kind of dive into the uh, overall technology review where we're going through like the main components in AppSheet and AppMaker and start to compare and contrast like the behaviors and the overall system of features. And then we'll finish up with a little bit more on preview, deployment, security, and then there's a little bit I want to touch on AppScript and AppSheet at the very end. And then it's pretty much open for, for Q&A after that. All right. So first off, I uh, just want to mention that um, there's a couple questions that are coming up that, like, for example, the biggest question is like, can I, quote, migrate an AppMaker app over to AppSheet? Uh, so uh, a straight migration is not possible, but it is possible to transition your data. And so we'll be discussing that in detail with regards to how to, you know, take the existing data that you have, export it out to a spreadsheet and then work at it from that angle, or even keep your data in a SQL uh, database as well. Um, pricing is the other thing that has come up quite a bit. Um, so it has been answered in the forum to some degree, but this is basically reiterating that uh, there is an AppSheet Pro plan free of charge to existing AppMaker customers who have active apps. And this will apply as long as you're a G Suite customer. And then there's also another uh, avenue if you're a corporate customer with your larger app maker and G Suite investments, you can contact your account representative directly uh, and they'll be able to help you out as well. We also have an email that you can uh, subscribe to um, that will allow you to continue to ask these app maker slash app sheet uh, uh, related questions, all right? 
And Christian, I just want to add really quickly that uh, for many of you, you'll see that the AppSheet Pro plan on our website uh, is currently listed as not including or it would be an additional add-on uh, for Cloud SQL. We've made a special plan available for everybody who is a current AppMaker user uh, so that you are able to take advantage of the Cloud SQL free of charge as well as the AppSheet Pro plan for free as long as you are a G Suite customer. Cool. Thanks so much. Yeah. And oh, I suddenly can't change my slide here. <laughs> there we go. So uh, another common question is um, what options exist to actually migrate off of AppMaker? So there isn't like one single technology. Obviously, we're covering AppSheet today to not necessarily migrate, but at least provide some transition options. Um, the other most common ones are, especially for uh, complex AppMaker applications that have you know, very complex application logic or have highly customized UIs, uh, that's really starting to uh, essentially work more in the Google App Engine domain. So with Google App Engine, you have complete control of both server-side and front-end uh, client UI. Um, you typically are working in either Java, Python, and now there's Node, there's Go. So you have your pick of languages. Um, if you're coming from AppMaker, you're familiar with AppScript and JavaScript. So uh, running a Node app uh, on App Engine is probably uh, a, a best suited path. Um, we're not going to go into detail uh, much more than that. There's also UI frameworks that you would want to employ probably. There's React, Angular, uh, Flask for Python developers that also uh, make it a lot uh, easier and more economical to build uh, effective UIs in that sense. Um, then there's some other simpler technologies. So if you have static portions of, uh, of the content on your AppMaker apps, you could actually build a Google site and put that on there and still integrate more dynamic data via iframes. So such as like maybe put like a, an iframe of a Google Sheet onto an app, uh, a Google site. So that's one option. There's also the same types of integrations you can do with Google Forms and then even uh, connecting Google Forms with App Script so you can have a little bit more um, uh, function, functionality on the back end. And of course, there's another popular tool that has been uh, becoming used a lot with AppMaker and sites is uh, Stata Studio. So you, if you want to do a lot of the, the cool uh, reporting capabilities that you can do with Data Studio, uh, you can integrate that out as well uh, into a, an overall solution as well. So anyway, these are just kind of some preliminary options to consider. We'll be providing more and more information on this as well as we go along. So just um, now to kind of switch gears a bit and talk about AppSheet directly. So AppSheet has been a product that's been around for actually over five years. Um, as you know, it was acquired by Google just last month. Um, so it's all fairly new to all of us actually, but um, AppSheet is, and probably the biggest thing to note is that it truly is a no-code approach to building business applications. So there's no code editor and so forth. Um, the data is pretty agnostic, but you would typically work from a cloud-based sheet, such as a Google Sheet, or you can, if you have the pro plan, you can connect to a cloud-based SQL database, so Google Cloud SQL. Um, the UI itself is uh, mobile first by default, and so you actually can generate UI automatically, uh, and you have different ways to view the, the preview right there directly in the, in the tool itself. And so the overall intention for AppSheet is that it's not a purely a, a full stack developer, nor is it even a low code developer, but it's really anyone, anyone who has, or everyone, I guess, who has data and they want to quickly build a mobile friendly UI for a front end. So one thing that I've done in comparing AppSheet to AppMaker is I started to kind of break it down component by component. And, uh, and in my uh, early time with AppSheet, I noticed that there's the three main uh, nodes or three main components of AppSheet that map quite well to AppMaker. There's the data node. Uh, so on AppSheet, that is, you can actually start to build out similar types of model objects. Uh, app sheet refers to them as tables. And those are essentially one-to-one -one mappings to backend sheets or SQL tables and so forth. So similar concepts there. Uh, UI, uh, as I mentioned, it's a mobile first UI development approach. Um, there is no notion of like a preview button. You just have the preview turned on by default. And also most importantly, AppSheet does not support custom UIs. You can uh, essentially customize the UI through property editors, but you don't have the ability to drop into low level HTML, JavaScript or CSS in that regard. And then logic. 
Um, so as you know, with AppMaker, you can do client-side scripting or server-side scripting to handle both the client-side or front-end uh, UI interactions, as well as server-side scripting, which taps into the overall app script uh, server environment. That is quite a bit different from the logic node on AppSheet, but there are similarities at a higher level. So AppSheet provides, obviously it's a no-code app development tool, and um, so there's no code editor, but you can actually uh, create application logic via the property editors using logical expressions. And there actually is like a feature called the expression assistant that allows you to assemble the uh, logical expressions. So that's more or less in a nutshell, the, the three main components and how they compare to uh, AppMaker. So visually, uh, one of the first things that you'll notice is like AppSheet has like a table editor. This is analogous to the AppMaker model editor. So with a table editor, you can go through and, and change like the input data types, uh, whereas on the AppMaker model editor, you can change like obviously the, the data types directly. Uh, one bit of difference is that Notice on the AppMaker side, you can add fields and remove them, change you know, the actual schema of your data, and then that generates or updates the backend data source. Whereas with AppSheet, um, if you need to make a schema change or say remove or add a column, you have to go back to the underlying spreadsheet and then regenerate uh, what you see in the AppSheet table editor directly. All right. Data types. So this is also a pretty big difference, but the end result is still essentially the same. AppMaker, as you know, has four fundamental data types, text, number, boolean, date. And then if you're using Cloud SQL, you get these subtypes where you can tap into the, uh, the types, the data types that Cloud SQL provides. Um, on AppSheet, you have a quite an array of data types. And this is kind of following the notion that it has the use case encoded into the data type. So that's where you see some interesting UI that gets generated by default without even having to do anything. You simply just select the data type and it will render the appropriate UI widget or UI element that makes the most sense. So like a date time, for example, a decimal, even some interesting ones like drawing or signature, uh, maps and so forth. So it's a, actually, it's a slightly different way to approach it, but it's actually very convenient in this regard. So I think you'll find this is a, a nice uh, update. Querying data, it's roughly similar to the AppMaker querying mechanism where you have AppMaker has data sources where you can assign one or many uh, queries against your backend data models and you use a feature known as the AppMaker's query builder to construct queries. Uh, in AppSheet, you have data, uh, AppSheet slices or data slices where you can essentially create queries through logical expressions. So in this case, you have like order status equals open and then you can go through and filter out the data depending on you know what particular slice of data that you would like to do. So you can actually use the expression assistant to build or string together fairly complex uh, uh, filter conditions or formulas uh, in a similar way to how you would build, say, a query inside of Query Builder in AppMaker using the code completion mechanism. Relations. This is another very important uh, comparison between the two products. So as you know, on AppMaker, there is a relation editor where you can set one to one, one to many, many to many relationships between your data models. Um, there is a similar concept in AppSheet where you can actually connect different data tables together and have relational uh, mechanisms or essentially relational operations between the two. Uh, this is done via setting the data type to ref. So when you set a, an actual field or a column to a type ref, you can actually specify the related table's name, and then that will drive the relationship between those two tables. So in a demo that we're going to show in a second, I'm going to show AppMaker where we have a relation, and we're going to export it out and bring it over to an app sheet, and then Derek will show kind of essentially how to rebuild that app uh, fairly quickly. Um, also, uh, this fairly important topic, if you're actually looking to export your data, uh, so I'll actually walk through this step where you can go through pick a deployment, click on the uh, export button there, and just push that out to a Google Sheet. And then from that point, you're off and running and you're able to work within AppSheet's environment. Um, again, if you have your Cloud SQL database and you're already managing that database directly, you could also uh, connect from AppSheet directly to Cloud SQL if you want. Um, you, you do need the pro plan though, but the, that capability does exist. All right, so let me just switch over to the demo. And I'm going to start off in AppMaker. And so what I've done, and I've done uh, a little bit of work with Derek, where I've created kind of like a prototypical uh, simple app where I have like a relationship set up where I have a master detail or one to many. So in this case, I have a department which has multiple employees. 
Um, and so in that sense, I have two data models and I created like a little bit of UI here to administer the data as well as like uh, walk through the different relationships. So I have de departments here and employees here. So that application works fine as you would guess. And then, so the thing that I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna pull up one of the deployments and I'll just do a quick export. So I've done this before, but you can see I'll click export and that would just fire off and grab all of the models and relations data, place that into a sheet. And once that finishes the export, I'll be able to hand that off over to Derek. And then Derek will be able to take this spreadsheet, which has got generated right there on the fly. And you'll notice that it's got the two models and it also has a relationship already defined in the spreadsheet. So I can actually connect the, the employees to the specific departments. Um, and so that's essentially the starting point by which Derek will be able to take over and do a demo on his side of taking that exact uh, spreadsheet. So uh, Jennifer, if you can hand this over to uh, Derek. Okay, thank you, Christian. Uh, all right, I will go ahead and share my screen and we're gonna need to just do a quick transition here. Um, so bear with me for just a moment. And change presenter to, all right, and I will show my screen. And you should be seeing a island of Catalina. Uh, can anybody confirm that that's uh, what they're seeing now? Don't actually see it on my side. Okay, let's see then. Uh, stop showing screen, not showing anything. Ah, here we go. Uh, I will select what to show. Yep. Can you, uh, All right, we got it. Sir, can you do a quick confirmation that uh, you can be heard from your microphone? Uh, yeah, uh, Christian's able to hear me, and yep. you should now see Catalina Island. Uh, can you confirm that, Christian? Yes, I, I see it. Awesome. And Derek, really quickly before you um, continue on, so there will be a copy of this recording available for everyone uh, shortly later today. I just posted a link to the community thread, which will contain uh, a link to the video, and then it will also be on the AppSheet YouTube channel, which will be circulating for it as well. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you. Cool, so I'll pick up right where Christian left off. Uh, I got the, uh, uh, Excel file, or excuse me, this is a Google Sheets file from Christian, and have this inside my Google Drive. And so in this demo, I'm gonna show how people would typically take their first few steps in AppSheet. Uh, starting from a data set, so in this case, we have a column that's already identified as our, our primary key, and we have some basic information here about the employees, including their name, their email address, uh, their physical address, photos, and we also have a table about departments inside the company. Uh, so how do we make an app from this inside of AppSheet? Uh, I'll open up AppSheet and I've already logged into my account. In this case, I authenticated into my account using my Google credentials. And what that does is it gives me access to all the files inside my Google Drive to then use them when creating applications. So to get started, I'll click make a new app. It gives me three options here to start with your own data, start with an ID, idea, or start with a sample app. And uh, these two options here on the right uh, are, are a little bit more of a guided process. For this demo, I'm gonna start with my own data. And I'll give my app a name. Uh, we'll call it the App Maker Transition Demo. And I'll give my app a category. Uh, in this case, just putting it as other. And now I'm gonna choose my data. <clears throat> so we have a few options here. And these are all data sources that I've already connected to my account. I'm gonna circle back to this a little bit later to show how to connect new data sources. Uh, the first one here is Google, and that's showing up again because I authentic authenticated into my account using my Google credentials. So I'll click that, and now we're looking at my Google Drive, and I have this folder called AppSheet AppMaker Webinar, and that's where I stash the file that uh, Christian gave me as the export. And so I'll, I'll click to grab that file, and uh, while these bubbles go, what AppSheet is doing is looking at the spreadsheet, looking at the columns, looking at the type of data, and deriving some assumptions about what the intent of the app creator is. Uh, AppSheet's seen hundreds of thousands of apps come through, and based on that data set, we're able to apply some machine learning to uh, automate some of the app creation process. <clears throat> so now we're, we're looking at AppSheet. <clears throat> 
And before I go any further, I'm going to take a quick step back to describe what we're seeing inside the editor here. So on the left side of the screen, we have our navigation menu, and this includes those, those primary nodes that Christian mentioned, including data, UX, behavior. This is where a lot of the logic comes in, security and intelligence. And then in the center of the screen, we're seeing this is the app editor itself. And on the far right, we're seeing a live preview. Uh, so right now we're seeing the mobile preview. We could switch that over to tablet or we could uh, uh, open up the preview in a new tab to see the web version. And I'll come back to that a little later. So this, the, the choices that we make inside of the editor here are going to be displayed in real time in our app preview over here on the right. Because our data set included addresses, AppSheet uh, interpreted that we probably want to see a map. You're not obligated to keep the map, but it just provided it as a starting point. And so we're seeing the physical location of our employees right now. If I click over to the uh, from data to tables, you can see I've got the employee table already loaded. That was the first tab in the spreadsheet. And AppSheet gave me a suggestion to add a table for department. So I'll go ahead and take that suggestion. And AppSheet's doing the same thing now for the department table, where it's looking at the column headers and looking at the data and making some assumptions about what we probably want to see. Uh, so if uh, we look at the live preview now, we can see a new table was added for department, and we already had this table for employee. So I'll click into employee, and, and you can see here's a list of all of the employees from our spreadsheet. Uh, their pictures were rendered, and a few actions were already created for us based on the type of data. Because AppSheet saw that we had an email address, it created a quick action here so we could uh, easily email. Uh, that employee and it created a quick action to see where that employee lives on site in, in the map. And going back to employee, if I click on Mickey Mouse here, we can see that uh, it has picked up what department that Mickey Mouse belongs to. If I click on the on the department, now we're seeing details about the apart, department and all of the related employees. Uh, so everything inside the app is already connected. Uh, so we're just a couple minutes in and we've already got a working app. So that's pretty cool. Um, from here, there's a lot of customization that people can do. Uh, AppSheet is very much a platform and not a single solution. Uh, so we provide a tool that enables app creators to create, to, to connect the data they need, create the views that they need to visualize that data, and then assign behavior to that views so that we can automate a lot of the processes that people use when they're working with data in modern applications. One last thing I'd like to show uh, before I turn it back to Christian, is uh, how to connect another data source. Uh, so in this case, we're using Google Sheets, uh, but I know a lot of people coming from App Maker are familiar with uh, Cloud SQL. So I'll show just quickly where to go to connect to that. Uh, I'll start by going up to my account. And as this loads my account, uh, we can see there's a few tabs here, um, and I'm already in sources. And under account sources, we can see these are a few uh, uh, data sources that I've already connected to my account. So you can see I have a OneDrive connected, I have a Smartsheet account connected, and I already have a, a SQL database connected. Uh, if I want to add a new data source, I just click on plus data source. And you can see here are all the options for the data sources that AppSheet connects with. Uh, AppSheet's very much a data source agnostic platform. Uh, you can connect you can combine any of these data sources into a single app if you need to. If you're connecting to a new cloud database, uh, you would need to first have a plan that supports a cloud database and uh, then click on to the cloud database here and add the information about the server, the database, username, and password. Uh, I'm not gonna go into this in any more detail in this webinar, but I will just point out um, that we have a detailed guide that goes step, through step, step by step through the process uh, so if that's something you're interested in trying out, uh, feel free to go to help.appsheet.com and we can uh, and you can find that guide there. I just want to confirm a few of you mentioned that you've lost audio. Are you able to hear us right now? If you just want to give us a quick yes or a thumbs up in the question box. Yeah, while we I'm wait for that. I am seeing that the audio is getting picked up by the webinar, so if, okay. if anybody wants to confirm that, then that would be helpful. For what it's worth, I can hear hear you guys just fine. But, uh... Okay, perfect. Thanks, Christian. 
Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to turn it back over to Christian at this point. Can I jump in with um, Sure, please. Um, just to clarify, um, right at the start, Jennifer mentioned that um, the AppSheet Pro plan is available to all of all AppMaker customers. Um, and uh, the Cloud SQL Connector is also available to all uh, AppMaker customers uh, just as part of your uh, G Suite subscription, uh, just to help ease the transition. So there had been some questions on the forum about that, and we just wanted to uh, clarify. Cool. Thanks, Praveen. Derek, is it also worth showing the uh, entire web app so that that sure. some clarity on that? Be happy to. Uh, so I will come back into the app editor here by going to My Apps. And we're going to see another example of, of an app in full screen later on as well. Um, but I'll come down. These are all my deployed apps. This one, since I just created it, it's still in prototype. So I'll click here to open up the app inside the editor. And uh, there's a couple different ways we can preview this. Uh, I'm going to first show you where to get a link that you could send to a user. That lives under Users, Links. And you have a link to install the app on your cell phone or a link for people to open up in a browser. I know a lot of people coming from AppMaker are probably more familiar with the browser format and uh, apps built in AppSheet are responsive out of the box. Uh, so I'll just click this open in tab and this is gonna uh, show the app in the same version as it is using the browser link. And we can see here the, the same app is now shown in, in uh, full screen on our desktop and we have all the same functionality available to our users as we had in the mobile version. I know this is really important to a lot of folks on the AppMaker forum, so we just wanted to clarify that AppSheet apps work uh, in a browser, but they also work on mobile devices, which is kind of becoming uh, important to have the duality. Mm -hmm. Okay, for real this time, I will turn it over to Christian. So I'm going to stop showing my desktop. And Christian, you should be able to now take control and show your desktop again. Okay. Um, hey, Jennifer, can you uh, make me presenter? I don't see the... Oh, yes. Yeah, cool, thank you. There you go. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna click on the show my screen. So I think that looks correct, at least from my little preview window. And I am on mute. Okay. Are you guys... Uh, Everything look okay on your end? So basically yes. just looking at a, a slide here that says demo. Okay, let's continue on. Um, also time check, we got about 32 minutes. So I'm gonna try to make sure I cover some of these remaining topics fairly quickly. Um, let me also close my little control window so I can see the rest of my slide. There we go, okay. So we switching gears to just a bit. We touched on some of the data uh, features uh, between AppSheet and AppMaker, and then of course Derek showed you like a nice uh, quick demo. Um, let me drill down a little bit further on the UI, and we'll also discuss some of the other topics as well. So first off, with the UI technology that you get in AppSheet, it's kind of like an inverse of AppMaker, whereas like AppMaker had like just a few data types, but then you had lots of widgets uh, or lots of uh, ways to use it. In, in an opposite sense, the uh, AppMaker's UI has like a, a a small set of view types. And then, uh, then you can customize it via the actual data input types. So uh, in this sense, yeah, it's just a slightly different, but based on the use case, it actually works out pretty well in this regard. And then some details about uh, the views compared to AppMaker widgets. Um, as uh, has been mentioned, uh, they're mobile friendly by default. Uh, so that takes the pain out of like having to build any kind of responsive UI that you've done previously with AppMaker. Uh, very importantly, app sheet views are not hierarchical, uh, with the exception of the dashboard view, and, and uh, Derek's going to give a little quick demo of that. But uh, in general, you know, it, as with AppMaker, you have a lot of concepts. You have the ability to embed widgets within widgets. So you have like a page container that has panels, and the panel is going to contain form elements, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's not supported directly. Uh, but you have like these nice, useful, ready-to-run view types that you can just get them up and running and then change their behaviors to be the property editor. AppSheet views also do not uh, support specifically like this fragment, uh, page fragment type uh, UI that you get with AppMaker. So reusable content in multiple pages, that's not necessarily a feature of the AppSheet, but you essentially can, can govern similar behaviors though. Uh, AppSheet uh, app does not provide a similar uh, 
pop-up behavior that you get with the pop-up framework within AppMaker. Uh, this is in line with the typical, you know, mobile first type of a behavior where you're not typically seeing pop-ups anyway. So this is not necessarily an issue. Um, AppView views are configured and in, configured entirely through their respective editors. So with the, every different view type, you can go through and change all the different properties fairly easily. Um, also, just to kind of reiterate this point, you cannot go in and use custom CSS, custom JavaScript, or any kind of third-party custom uh, UI framework. So you basically work within the uh, the AppSheet view uh, editor environment, uh, which is actually good for the, the large masses of folks that are not necessarily comfortable with diving uh, deep into a CSS or JavaScript in that regard. Um, and yeah, there is also additional functionality where you can include custom logos, icons, and, and other things. Uh, and so a lot of it's determined by your actual data as well. So I'm um, going to hand it back. Sorry, it's a little quick uh, plumbing change here. We're going to switch it back over to, to Derek, and he's going right. to uh, continue on where he left off and show a little bit more advanced UIs that you can do. So, okay. All right, okay. so while this is loading, a uh, quick question for Derek from the community. Uh, we had a question about using multiple sheets instead of just a single sheet to build an application. Do you wanna talk about that a little bit? Sure, uh, yeah, you have quite a few options there. So I'll pull up our app that we were looking at earlier. And if we go back into the app editor, uh, I'm gonna go to the data tab here. And we're going to we're looking at tables here. And so every table you load into your app is going to appear here. So once it's been loaded, you can work with it. Um, it the, the process on the app sheet side is the same, whether this table is coming from SQL or whether it's coming from Google Sheets or Microsoft OneDrive. Um, in terms of the specific question about using multiple sheets, uh, absolutely. Uh, you can click here to add a new table. I can go into my Google Drive again, and uh, I can select any other Google Sheet that lives inside of my Google Drive here. And after I've added that sheet, it'll just show up here as another table. Uh, so you can do that to bring in other tabs from the same spreadsheet or uh, to bring in uh, entirely separate spreadsheets into a, a common app. Thank you for that, Derek. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, I will go ahead and uh, jump into uh, the dashboard uh, demo that Christian mentioned. Um, so we're looking at a new app here. Uh, this is one that we've uh, that we use to demonstrate the process of uh, collecting safety reporting events, um, kind of targeted at construction industry, but really cross industry applicable as well. Uh, so what we're just to give a quick lay of the land here. Um, we're actually looking at five different views all in one page here. Uh, so the top left is a list of all of our job sites. And in the center, we have a list of all the reports from those from each job site. Then we have some statistics about those job sites. And all of this data uh, in AppSheet fashion is connected. Uh, so I can click on uh, this first job site here and we can see all of the reports for that job site specifically. Uh, the number of events, uh, and those events broken up by priority or category. And similarly, I can go through uh, for these other job sites and, and see the same results update. Um, this is an example of a dashboard. And so going back to what Christian mentioned about uh, customizing views, uh, in, in the app sheet sense, uh, views are customized uh, by, well, you have a couple different options. Uh, first, you have the ability to uh, customize the individual views. Uh, so I'm back in the editor now, and under UX, uh, you can see a list of all these views. And uh, the job sites deck, uh, that lives down here in, uh, I've made it a reference view because we aren't actually looking at it individually. Um, but I can click here on the job sites deck and I can uh, change it, maybe I wanna, keep it as a deck view, maybe I wanna change it to a table view uh, or um, uh, adjust how that view is sorted or how it's grouped. Uh, so I make the choices that I want uh, to display inside that individual view in, in that view section of the editor. Then when I want to create a collection of views, I'm creating what's called a, a dashboard. And so I'll click on that. Uh, we're looking at the safety board dashboard. 
And I've given it type dashboard, and you can see I simply just selected all of the individual views that I wanted to have appear and gave it some um, indication about how I want those to appear. And uh, so you can see that those five views are, are then displayed here in the dashboard. Uh, so uh, again, there, there's, there's quite a bit of flexibility in, in how you set that up. Uh, this is just one version um, that is intended to display charts and um, lists of data. Uh, another common uh, process is to use a, a dashboard to show multiple tables that can then be connected together in a Kanban. Um, the cool thing in AppSheet is that you can then have individual actions uh, that can apply to each row of data. So for example, if we had a Kanban that had uh, uh, a backlog of events in progress completed, uh, while those events are in the in progress lane, we could click an action and that would change the status. And then the, we'd see in the dashboard, they'd automatically move over to the completed stage. Uh, so, so a lot of flexibility there as well. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Christian. Let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And that is not webinar. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen again. Looks good. All right. So checking on the time, I'm going to go ahead and um, try to not to spend too much uh, time on each slide, but we'll uh, be able to hopefully have some time towards the end to, to handle a little bit more freeform uh, questions. Okay. So the third uh, tier or the third node that uh, compares uh, fairly well to AppMaker is the uh, the logic tier. So essentially, you know how to build customized workflows and such. So AppSheet has like the framework where it has like actions and workflows and uh, actions themselves have three variants. So uh, the one flavor is for dealing with navigations, we're showing the different views within an app or other apps, uh, data changes, uh, insert, update, delete, et cetera, and then uh, external communications such as calling external services and things like that. You can also group together actions um, in a grouped action fashion. So you can have like a string of different types of operations that are all uh, working together in a serial fashion. You can also trigger these by buttons or events or row selection and things like that. So fairly uh, use, uh, useful in different ways. Um, workflows is a variation of actions. It's actually a superset, I believe. And so you can have them triggered whenever data is updated or synced. Uh, a common example is like you know, sending an email any, anytime the user creates a new entry, things like that. The types of workflows typically are emails, uh, SMS, or push notifications, and then there's also a special one that allows you to call an, an outside service. Uh, that's where you can set up a workflow to have a, a webhook rule. All right, webhooks, and I won't go through all the details here, but essentially it, it follows if you understand how to interact with web services, you typically would have like a developer account on that remote web service where you have like a URL endpoint, you have some authentication mechanism. Um, in this case, um, API key is perfectly workable. You can plug that into a webhook rule that you set up in AppSheet. Um, and then once you have it configured, you essentially can have it a, uh, as a webhook action for that rule. And then you'll assign like the URL and then work with the, uh, the JSON or the API itself to uh, transport the data up to the service. And then it's actually a webhook in the sense that it's going to do its uh, processing and then update your backend data directly as well. All right. We can definitely spend more time on that topic alone, so we'll probably will actually. Um, preview and deployment. So this is another thing to keep in mind uh, in comparison uh, in comparison to AppMaker. Um, as you saw, preview is a constant thing in AppSheet. You know, you don't have to click the preview button and send up your entire app over to a runtime environment. Um, you always have that window handy, and you can look at it. It gets synchronized uh, whenever you make changes, and so you'll see like a little synchronization occur, or you can manually click a refresh, and it will make sure that the UI on the preview window is actually refreshed with what you have. You also have a save button, which is slightly different from AppMaker, where as AppMaker, you're, you're constantly, any updates you have, it's saving it all the time. It's slightly different with AppSheet because you have to click the, the save button and then that will propagate out and you'll get a refreshed view on the preview and things like that. Um, the deployment step is a little different as well. It's like with AppMaker, as you know, you create individual deployments with the respective access as well as the respective data. Whereas with the deployment on AppSheet, it's merely like a designation that's changing status from prototype to actually a deployed app. Um, there are some other 
deployment details where you can set up like a white label so that you can have it as a white label mobile app in the, in the Google Play Store. Incidentally, it also works in the iTunes Store as well. There is an automated testing feature coming soon. Uh, there is an EAP, early adopter, that there's a link that you can actually sign up for as well. All right. Um, just a few screenshots, you know, here's a, a screenshot of the uh, deployment check, which will actually go through, review your app and, and kind of, you know, give you some hints or some suggestions on how to improve it before you actually elevate it to the deployed state. And then once you deploy it, you'll actually see it in your apps listings as like, this is all of my deployed apps versus my prototype or editing apps as well. Um, and so that's essentially what it looks like once you switch it over to the deployment check. Um, so yeah, there's the, anything else there? A few other things, um, oh, this is kind of important in this distinction between AppMaker and AppSheet. Um, so you deploy the app as the creator, the developer by default, not as the end user. So if you recall on the app script side, when you deploy apps, you typically want the end user to execute it. It's different on the AppSheet side, it's still actually running as the, um, the creator or the developer. Um, apps can be shared with, you know, either in a similar way to AppMaker, you can share the, the access to the app as a developer or a uh, end user, um, whether you're using like just individual emails or through an entire domain. So in this case, if you're editing and you wanna share access to your app, you can first make it so that you require a sign-in first off, and then secondly, you can actually have an authentication provider hooked into your actual domain. So for example, in my case, I would connect it to my Google domain and then that would handle the uh, authentication into the application. All right. So security, this is a, obviously we're just kind of giving a high level overview, but in general, yeah, you can obviously control who can access the application first off by just requiring to sign in, which is you know different than AppMaker, whereas like AppMaker, you have to be signed in to use any application. Um, from that, you get into more granular control where you can actually set up specific filters that you know essentially limit access to different parts of the, the data or individual views. So for example, if they're email, matches this, then you know only this particular email can access that particular data. Um, again, like the two access modes, you're either going to be a creator or an app user. And as I mentioned, it supports, you can set it up so that you can support uh, domain-based authentication. Um, so further comparisons with AppMaker. Uh, this is actually a pretty important point. Uh, with AppMaker, as you know, you have this notion of roles and you have a admin role by default, but then you can create customized roles. And then when you deploy the app, you can assign the users via either in individual emails or whether Google or Google groups. Um, so that is not exactly the same way you do it with AppSheet. AppSheet has that default admin role, but you also have the ability to set up a manual kind of in a manual fashion, like a separate table that uh, tracks all of your custom roles. So you can have super user, super basic user, whatever you want that could uh, reside in a specific table. And then you use the logic in your application to govern how it can actually access the different elements of your application in that sense. All right. Uh, another distinction is like view permissions are allowed on the entire view, like a view by view basis in AppSheet. Whereas with AppMaker, if you recall, you can actually set up the roles to be able to access different elements of the UI. So not only the entire page, but individual sub components of a page. So for example, you may not want to show an admin link to a uh, the ad, uh, to the regular users. Only the admins can see that. So and that's handled a little bit different. Obviously, you you just handle it on a view by view basis, uh, depending on their access levels or their roles that you have defined. All right. Um, a few more final thoughts before we switch into Q and A mode. Um, in general. AppSheet is great for working with uh, typical data intensive CRUD type of applications uh, with some amount of workflow, but you don't necessarily have to get into too much coding. Uh, those are definitely, as you saw with uh, Derek's uh, examples, they, they can be quite uh, rich UIs. You can have a significant you know, backend logic that supports that UI. Um, so yeah, so you still have with AppSheet a, a good deal of uh, technology in front of you that you can take advantage of. Uh, for our more complex apps on AppMaker, uh, so I've seen many apps that have thousands of lines of code. Um, these you know, aren't really a good fit for AppSheet, I'll be honest. And, and so that's where you have to step back a little bit and either consider taking the app apart, maybe some of its functionality can be offloaded into other technologies, or if you want to really build out the same application, 
uh, app engine from Google is essentially kind of like the, the catch-all. So you can do any kind of complex application logic, as I mentioned, and of course, any custom UI. And I touched on some of those other options, but these, this is definitely an area that we'll continue to refer to uh, in the forums and so forth. All right. One final note, um, I wanted to touch on a topic that has also come up with some of the users. It's like, if they have existing AppMaker applications that have AppScript, is there any way to bridge the app script set of functions to an app sheet app? Um, so first off, there isn't really a built-in way other than some basic, like you can set up a do post um, function that can then uh, be called from an outside you know, service or an outside like webhook in this case uh, from app sheet or really any, any outside uh, calling entity. Um, there is a discussion underway right now that I've had with the uh, AppScript engineering team where you can actually use a public one platform API for executing AppScript directly. Uh, there is like a, a link there. Um, there is a bit of a restriction though that the OAuth token must be from the same cloud project. Um, there's some discussions about maybe this could be uh, opened up a bit so that you can actually allow other uh, uh, clients to come in and do it. So this is something that's still kind of under discussion, but yeah, feel free to let us know if this is something that you want to continue to kind of uh, look into uh, more closely. Yep. This is Praveen, just jumping in with a quick comment on, on app script and hooking to it. Uh, this is an area where we collectively on the Google side will do some more legwork and then provide some clearer guidance on how best to hook an app sheet application to um, app script running server side. Yeah, so definitely. And we could probably even do a webinar once we get everything all, all worked out. But yeah, no, it's definitely an important topic. Yeah. Um, cool. So that takes us pretty much to the end of our, our core presentation. We have some time left over, but uh, we have some key links here that you'll be able to check out. There's a uh, help center. There's a support page. There's also the community. Uh, there is also that uh, email, the Google group as well. Uh, there's also a Udemy course that you can also sign up for and take. Uh, so I actually went through that course when I first looked into AppMaker a while back, and so definitely recommend it. Um, so yeah, and there's plenty of information. There's a lot of tutorials. Just for me, kind of like as, as a, initially like an outsider and started to just poke around the, the technology, I found it to be um, quite a lot of fun actually to go through and look at the tutorials and stuff like that. So um, it may not be exact fit for your AppMaker solution, but definitely I would recommend having a look at it and, and, and taking advantage of all of the materials that the app sheet team has put together over the you know, last few years. Cool. Sure. Well, other? thank you, Christian. Uh, I'm gonna try to tackle some of the questions that we have time for here. We do wanna be respectful of everyone's time. Uh, we do know that you're all quite busy and we appreciate you taking an hour out of your day to um, learn a little bit more about this potential solution. Uh, we, again, some of you have already started posting questions on that community thread that we put in the chat box. Uh, that is the same community forum overall that Christian pointed to just a moment ago. And Christian, would you actually be so kind as to go back one slide just to display some of those resources I wanted to touch on one more moment? Yep. So AppSheet Help Center documentation, that's going to be more of your technical references. Those are really, really helpful if you're looking for expression assistance or if you want to get a little deeper into uh, how to customize your UI a little bit more using AppSheet. There were a few questions on that and you are correct. There's not a CSS uh, capability for customizing your UI UX right now. That's not to say, however, that we don't have uh, some really incredible customization options available with AppSheet. You can do quite a bit, including custom icons, uh, special logo uploads, you name it. You can certainly customize. Uh, in terms of, and Christian, if you want to go back, perfect. AppSheet support, uh, if you have a higher level technical question that the documentation can't answer for you, please feel free to reach out to our team. The app sheet, app sheet excuse me, a creator community, uh, again, that's that forum we mentioned earlier. Our community, much like the app maker community, is very passionate and very knowledgeable about what takes place with an app sheet and what it's capable of. So if our member of a, a member of our team cannot answer your question quickly, I guarantee you there's somebody on that forum that can help you that's familiar with app maker as well uh, that can provide a little additional guidance. And the Udemy course that Christian mentioned is a great uh, 100 level course to how to learn the basic fundamentals of app sheet. Overall, it's a free course you can sign up for. Um, there's a, a great uh, PDF and a thread on that community called How to Learn AppSheet, which gives you 10 different resources on how to get onboarded to the platform 
quickly uh, to reduce any type of barrier of entry at all. So just to touch on those, there have been a few questions. Uh, so in terms of Chris, I have a question for you. Uh, let's talk about iframes. Uh, can the app sheet be included into an existing Google site, for example, with an iframe? Um, yeah, you can embed uh, app sheet apps into Google sites with an iframe. Um, we've had experience doing that and it, it works great. Well, cool. thank you. Uh, and I will leave this question up for the room, uh, whomever would like to answer this. Uh, applications created in AppSheet, are they going to be available outside of my domain? Um, I'll take that. Um, AppSheet is a platform, the apps can run, again, with users who are in your domain or outside your domain. There's a variety of different access control models. And so if you look at the broad swath of AppSheet customers, they access data from different sources and the users come from different domains. Um, that said, our, when it comes to G Suite customers building app maker apps for folks in their domain, it's going to be a very easy fit because um, it's easy to include uh, members of your domain. Um, so it will work for them, um, but it will also work for customers outside your domain or users outside your domain. Perfect. Thank you so much, Praveen. Uh, there were a few additional questions similar to this that asked about uh, authorized versus authenticated access to applications falls in, within that same bucket, would you say? There's a pretty rich security model um, that lets you control um, who can access your app, um, how they authenticate, and what each of them can do with the app. And so, um, there's a lot of documentation that describes this in sort of layman's terms, but also with the next level of detail down on the um, help help side. And if there's interest, we can certainly do a deeper dive onto security at some point in time. Absolutely. Yeah. One thing to add to that, Praveen, is uh, you know just the, the notion of authentication versus permissions. Um, while there there's a, there's a rich uh, options for authenticating into the app, there's also a lot of control that you have over what permissions a person has once they're authenticated. Uh, so authenticating a person in doesn't automatically give them access to everything inside the app. Those two concepts are controlled separately inside of AppSheet. Right. It's worth pointing out that um, just because it's a no-code model doesn't mean that the security model, for example, is simple. Um, you actually rarely want to have code implementing a security. You want your security to be expressed at a higher level so that the platform is secure. So it's a really rich security model. Uh, but luckily, you don't have to write code to implement it. It's implemented by the platform. Perfect. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, so there's been a few questions around deployment. Uh, some of you were very eager to learn about AppSheet and you signed up for a free account, which, welcome, we're super excited to have you. But you've noticed there's a, a little hurdle and you're not able to deploy. Uh, I would encourage you to reach out to that email address. Christian, would, can you go back to the uh, previous slide just to showcase that email address? So the am yeah. AppSheet at googlegroups.com. Uh, please reach out to that with the email address that you currently have your account set up with, and we'll ensure that you have a unique discount code uh, for your um, organization to ensure you can deploy uh, your app and make sure that um, your Cloud SQL is also connected. Oh, and I should just point out that um, the word deployment might be confusing. Any app that you've built, even with a free AppSheet account that you've already tried, can be run immediately. It can be run in a browser. It can be run on a device. You can share it with, you know, up to ten of your colleagues to try it out. You do not need um, so every app is immediately runnable and usable by other people. Um, it's just that it's still in a prototype stage until your market is deployed, and that's more related to whether or not you have a paid account. And that's where the discount code and all of that stuff comes in. But there should be nothing stopping you from experimenting with AppSheet today or um, and any app that you've built already in the last week or last weeks uh, is immediately runnable. Yeah, and think of it like from an app maker perspective, it's like you have the ability to share your preview with other folks very easily without really having to do an actual deployment. So, so yeah. Perfect. All right, uh, I have a great question that actually, Chris, if you wanna tackle on enterprise management views for AppSheet apps. What is the question? I'm, I'm also, oh, I'm so sorry. Is there an enterprise management view for all AppSheet apps? Um, yeah, um, from the enterprise page, or 
you can actually manage um, all of your teams within your organization or within your team, see what apps are being run, as well as um, see some of the statistics and um, usage and things like that um, across your organization. Uh, if that's something you're interested, uh, reach out to the uh, that email there as well, and we can work with you to see how yeah. to get that enabled. Yeah, I yeah, want that's to transfer oh, um, the enterprise management capabilities are part of the um, enterprise package of AppSheet that is not part of the pro plan. And so I don't want to have any confusion. You know, I don't want to cause any confusion. Uh, we can always follow, you can follow up with us or with the AppSheet support and we can clarify some of that. Uh, those capabilities exist in the platform, but the AppSheet platform starts all the way from the simple capabilities, app building, all the way to rich enterprise management. Yeah, and just adding on to that, uh, enterprise management in general is a very uh, important topic for AppMaker, and it was something that that uh, people have been asking about for for a number of years now to have that make uh, a much more seamless experience. So I'm happy to see that AppSheet uh, does provide that. <laughs> Welcome, news. On, on that same subject, uh, in addition to enterprise management, there's also governance that AppSheet supports. And yeah, part of that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, allows the uh, AppSheet administrator for that account to place guardrails over what their app creators are capable of doing. So for example, if um, you needed to prevent your app creators from uh, exposing certain information publicly, you could do that through a governance package. Uh, that is, uh, again, something that's in addition to the pro plan, so it's, it's not included in the pro plan, but something that's uh, available as a separate package. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we we touched on this a little bit more a little bit earlier, but we talked about uh, user roles, uh, and I know that AppMaker has a slightly different history uh, in terms of how they've managed this piece. And this particular question is: Can an app made with AppSheet be made to load different elements based on user resolutions or user roles? In my company, we would like to have different options to load based on what device they are using, so cell, tablet, laptop, and possibly not user roles. I'm a little unclear on this question, but uh, for part of this, I can certainly answer, and anyone else feel free to chime in. Um, we work really well on mobile, we work great on tablet, but we also work really, really well on a desktop or laptop. That's one of the really great things about AppSheet is that it's very, very versatile in how it can be presented. Yeah, it is possible uh, to detect the context in which you're running, what kind of device you're running on, and to decide to show or not show uh, certain elements um, based on that. Now, um, the granularity at which you detect this is pretty coarse. In other words, you you understand the context whether you're running on a uh, on a mobile device or uh, in a browser. Um, so there's probably a next level of detail we can go into. But the general answer is yes. Your um, the capabilities you provide and the UI you show can be customized by user and by environment. Perfect. All right, so we have just a few moments left. There are a number of questions here and I will follow up with all of you on the AppSheet forum to get answers where we can. Uh, I will also follow up with the questions that have been posted on that same forum or our community, uh, as we also call it, uh, as quickly as we can. But again, I wanna thank you all for taking time out of your day to join us. Uh, this webinar session will be made available shortly uh, from a recording standpoint, and also the slide deck will be made available for you all as well to reference. And again, please feel free to reach out. If you have any additional questions, need any additional support, we're here for you. And one thing I would like to add is that um, everybody in the AppSheet team is eager to help. There's five of us in the room, along with Christian, who has been helping on the app maker um, uh, context. Um, the questions you sent to support are seen by members of our team and are addressed by our team in addition to the community. Uh, we're here to help you and we'll help you through the transition to the extent we can. Great. All right, with that, uh, thank you so much again, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday if it's Wednesday for you, or happy Thursday if it's now Thursday for you. And uh, we'll follow up with additional details on future webinars soon. Thank you yeah, so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.